Hello everyone, welcome to another video of Nokri Learning. So in this video, we are going to look at how you can learn Python from scratch. So Python has become one of the most loved programming language across the globe and for good reasons. It has a good community support, good frameworks and modules for almost any domain that you can think of, right from web development, app development, even to data science, which is kind of solely based on Python nowadays. Okay, so for the basics part of Python, even if you're not familiar with any kind of programming language before, you can start with Python and it will be actually much more easier than other traditional languages like C and C++. So the first step is you need to learn the basic data structures of Python, list, tuple, strings, dictionaries, and all those stuff. You need to understand the basic syntax of Python. Then you need to look at the logical statements and how you can write if else statements. Then you need to look at how you can create loops like for loops and while loops. So if you like reading and learning, then one of the very great resource that you can use for learning your basics of Python could be W3Schools Python page. Okay, over here you can have understanding about the basic syntax of Python, right from the beginners level towards advanced levels like creating classes, iterators, scopes and modules. However, if you find videos more interesting and useful, then you can sign up for any paid courses at Nokri Learning Platform, which will also give you a certificate which you can uh, showcase to your recruiter. Otherwise, if you want to learn from free resources like in YouTube, then you can refer to Corey Scaffer's YouTube channel. Over here, you will find about 143 videos in Python playlist, which will also cover some specialized modules like Django, Flask, Pandas which will give you an end-to-end -end understanding from the very beginning level to advanced level in Python. So once you have a decent understanding about the basic syntax of Python and you're able to formulate your logic in Python via various conditions like loops and uh, logical statements, you need to start solving problems in various problem solving platforms. So this will not only solidify your concept that you have learned via these videos and tutorials, but it will also enrich your knowledge about various modules and functions that are at your disposal that you can use in various scenarios. Few such platforms could include Lead Code, which is actually a paid platform, or you can go to the free route and use Hacker Earth, Hacker Rank, and Geeks for Geeks. Though Geeks for Geeks and Hacker Earth are kind of, kind of exhaustive, you can, for the starting, you can use Hacker Rank. In Hacker Rank, there are kind of exhaustive set of questions that you can solve and actually it will boost your confidence in the initial level and will help you stick around with Python. Once you sign up in Hacker Rank, this is kind of an interface that you will be looking at and over here you can go down and go to the Python section. Over here you can choose the topic that you want to practice on, the difficulty level that you want to practice on and start solving problems. Once you start solving problems, you will be facing various difficulties. So you can go to their discussion section or check out the editorials or the code which are submitted by the leaders of this particular problem. Also, you can learn new techniques via searching in Google and this will help you to gain a knowledge on how you can read others code and how you can solve a problem in a much better manner than that you have so thought of. It will actually enrich your knowledge about Python and all the tools and modules that are at your disposal. So another great resource that you can use are Geeks for Geeks articles on Python. This will give you an uh, overview of the latest modules that are coming up in Python. Also, it will actually enrich your idea about what all modules are there which you can use. It will also aid your reading habit of articles on Python. So once you have a fair understanding about uh, the basic syntax of Python and you have started solving problems, you can also start learning about OOPS concepts in parallel. So at this stage, after the end of such exercise, you will have a fair understanding about the overview of the language, the common modules and the functions which are there and you can uh, use them with ease and you will be able to read others code as well. So as a programmer, you would spend actually more time reading others code and understanding them and using them in your module or in your project rather than creating your own code. So it's kind of really necessary to understand and read others code with ease. So these are the resources that you can refer to for first is W3 schools play uh, tutorials on Python, Python courses on not relearning. Then uh, you can practice on hacker rank. 
you can read articles from geeks for geeks or any other google article that come up on your search result while you're solving or searching for any problem and then you can refer to the free materials provided by course scaffers channel at youtube some project idea at this stage is that you can automate any excel task using python this will give you an understanding how you can use various modules in your project and interact with other applications like excel to read and write data and to manipulate in python another project could be you can uh, scrape a web, any web page and store that in your csv file this will give you an understanding how web works how you can make requests and this will also be a pathway to few of the important modules in python like request beautiful soup html parsers handling json values and so on more projects idea you can find them at this particular link so now that you have a decent understanding about the python language and you have built few of your projects as well it is time to step to the intermediate level so in the intermediate level we want to apply your oops concepts that you have learned in your previous steps into your current projects and keep and make your projects more modular you also need to start following pylint standards so these are standards of formatting your code or importing and writing your code in a certain manner which is actually easily readable to a fellow Pythonist. You can use any linter in your favorite IDE like PyCharm, Spider or VS Code and it will actually auto format for you. Okay so next thing is you need to learn data structures and algorithms as well so that your you write a very optimized and efficient code. So one way to practice your data structures and algorithm skills is while solving problems in the problem solving section of hacker rank also you can go to different sections like algorithms and data structures and solve problems over there and wherever you face issues you can actually search for that problem or that algorithm in google and learn from articles and youtube videos and again try solving problems on that particular topic only so that you actually solidify your learning alongside with it you also need to start exploring other modules and specialized modules like pandas, numpy, request, json modules, beautiful soup modules if you haven't started already. This will give you a good understanding of what all tools are there which are available in python and what kind of tasks that you can perform. You can also start looking at a uh, kinter module, pygame module to build some fun projects around it. Now since you are at an intermediate level and the codes that you are writing are actually valuable you can store them via git so we will attach a video about an overview of git and how you can use that in your system in the description below you can refer to that next you need to create some end-to-end -end projects that you can showcase in your resume or in your profile okay by end-to-end -end projects we mean that if you are creating any api then that needs to be hosted in your cloud platform so that it is accessible to anyone who has the link if you are creating any website then that need to be hosted in any other cloud platform if you are creating any uh, pipeline project then that needs to be hosted in git and it has it should have a clear documentation on what you are creating and something of similar sort where you take ownership of a problem and solve it end to end the next thing that you need to do is you need to learn about testing how you can write test cases in your project and how you can maintain your code via test cases so for testing you can use pytest module or unit test modules this will ensure that any changes made to your project will be fail proof and whenever you make any changes which are of maximum impact to your project you will run this test cases and this will ensure that nothing breaks in your code so now you would have idea about how you can optimize your code via using uh, best algorithms and data structures also you need to understand about paradigms via which you can fasten up your code like multiprocessing and multithreading so in your projects you should incorporate these paradigms so that your code is much faster than uh, while it's running on a single core or a single thread so at the end of this section you should be having a decent understanding about python you should be able to solve problems using python and use various modules in your code efficiently without actually looking into much tutorials out there also you should be able to read and understand third-party modules and their documentations you should be able to create modularized code using test cases along with it and publish them in git and you should be able to speed up your codes using algorithms and 
other processing paradigms like multiprocessing and multithreading. Again, the resources that you can use are Corey Scaffer's videos on uh, OOPS. You can solve problems at hacker rank, especially for DSN algorithms, and you can create projects, end to end projects, which you can showcase to everyone. A few projects idea could be you can build ETL pipelines, end to end ETL pipelines, where you can fetch data from any API or web scraping. You can store that in your databases or you can do any manipulation via Python and finally store that in your databases so that you will have an end to end understanding of building an infrastructure. And this will also allow you to interact with various platforms like databases and use different modules and connectors with Python. Also, you can create a custom package of your own and deploy in GitHub or in pip package manager so that you can brag about it and you can say everyone that this is your package that you have created. Also, you can create an API using fast API and host that in Heroku. So once you have the intermediate understanding about Python and you have some handy projects in your resume, you can start applying for internship and full time jobs as well. You can search for internships and jobs in Nokri.com platform or in Intenshala as well. And this will actually give you a more hands on experience on Python, which will add on to your experience and understanding of Python and moving towards the advanced and niche topic. There are multiple domains in which you can uh, be expert at. One could be web development and backend engineering. Over here, you can learn frameworks like Django, Flask and Fast API, which will help you to create web development platforms and backend infrastructures. Along with it, you can learn HTML, CSS and JavaScript which will actually be helpful in order to create web pages. Then you can understand about authentication and authorization. Then you need to look at REST APIs and REST frameworks. This could be using Django, Flask or Fast API. You should be having a good understanding about asynchronous and synchronous architecture. You can create a sample website for yourself. You can create an API and you can deploy all of them in Heroku or cloud platforms like AWS. So if you're keen in app development or game development, then you can look at specialized modules like Kinder, Pygame, PyQt, and Kiwi to develop apps and games. You can create sample projects on them and actually deploy them in Play Store or any app store, or maybe uh, as a web app so that you can showcase to everybody. Okay, so when it comes to data science analytics and data engineering, there are a lot of things that you can learn in uh, Python. Okay, so for the beginning, you can start with learning APIs and how to use them, how to script web, how to clean your data. There are multiple tutorials out there in YouTube, which will teach you this. Then you also need to know how you can create ETL pipelines because as a data science or data engineer or analytics person, you will be dealing with a lot of data and you need to clean data and put it in a stored format, which is actually cleaned and processed. So you need to set up ETL pipelines. And at this time you will also need to know tools like Airflow, which are kind of based on Python and which are schedulers and workflow managers. Also, you can look at parallel processing uh, frameworks like Dask or PySpark, which will be able to handle big data on which you will be working. Then you need to know basics about big data and how to manipulate them. Then you can learn more about specialized libraries like Pandas, Dask, Scikit-learn, PyTorch, TensorFlow and Keras to do machine learning modeling. Over here, you can do hands-on ML projects and deploy them the end result as an API using Heroku. The other things that you need to know at this stage, uh, which would come handy while your interview preparation would be DevOps skills. If you have good understanding about Docker's Kubernetes and other DevOps tools like Jenkins and pipeline building, then that will actually be a handy feature for you as well. After this, the outcome of this stage that you should be able to solve uh, and build end to end projects proficiently using Python, and you will be interacting with multiple in, uh, tools like Airflow databases, and you will be optimizing your code using multitasking using a uh, Dask or PySpark framework. And you should have enough projects to showcase in your resume. And you should at this time, you should be actually be able to start applying for internship and full time jobs. Okay. We have attached all the resources regarding web development, app development, data science engineering and uh, data engineering uh, stuff over here and DevOps courses, which you can look at and which we will be providing as a link in the description below. 
So with that note, this session comes to an end. If you have found this video useful, please share with your friends and peers. Please let us know your suggestions and feedbacks in the comment section below. And please subscribe to Nautilus Learning for more such videos. Thank you. Good day.